okay now we'll see all the formulas based on dc circuit that is your module first right so in this case what we need to do uh, first of all we need to discuss about the mesh analysis when whether they'll say mesh analysis or kvl meaning is same okay in the mesh analysis like algebraic sum of all the emf plus algebraic sum of all the voltage drop would be equal to zero correct like for suppose example we are having simply three meshes i am taking including the current source because students stuck in the current source mainly so like suppose this is the example and in this case we are having three meshes and three variables and three equation we need to form right so voltage drop is across the resistance and emf is across the battery so what we'll need to do mark the current direction then accordingly mark the sign convention and then accordingly make the mesh equation right so we'll make one by one mesh equation first if there is a current source then we'll need to make the current source equation that is minus i2 plus i3 is equal to c and from this we can make a mesh that would be second sign i told you i we have to take every time minus 4 i1 minus 10 i1 minus i2 plus 100 similarly we can take this super mesh because we can't go through the path where current source is present right so the third mesh equation would be minus 6 i2 minus 8 i3 minus 4 minus 10 of i2 minus i1 would be equal to 0 so this is your third equation three equ variable three equation we can solve it in the calculate so this is about mesh analysis next topic is according to the manipal is nodal analysis nodal analysis or we can say kcl okay in this simply we'll take the current that is sum of incoming current would be equal to the sum of outgoing current right hmm? incoming current we can denote it by positive sign and outgoing current we can denote it by negative sign again i am taking a simple example based on current source only like suppose this is the case in the first step we have to determine how many nodes are there so, so basically there are two main nodes and this one is the grounded node and at the ground the potential is always equal to zero correct so next step is to mark the current direction current you can take it accordingly randomly whatever direction you need to mark next step is to apply kvl at particular node like suppose if we'll apply kvl kcl sorry at node that is sum of incoming current would be equal to the sum of outgoing current so incoming current is how much i1 outgoing current is how much i2 plus i3 now in the next step we need to convert in terms of v by r like current as you know according to ohm's law i would be equal to v by r right so i1 would be equal to 0 minus va we have to take the second sign 0 it is moving as you can see current i1 is moving from 0 to va now so it would be 0 minus va plus 100 divided by the resistance 4 ohm now i2 is moving from va to 0 or 0 to va tell me so it would be how much va minus 0 divided by 6 now i3 is moving from va to vb so it would be va minus vb divided by a similarly if i apply the kcl at node b incoming current is i3 is entering into node vb and i5 is also entering into the node vb so can we say that i3 plus i5 would equal to i4 correct now i3 is moving from va to vb so it would be va minus vb divided by 8 
I5 as you can see this is the current source and we need to calculate current only so in this case we don't know, need to convert it in terms of V by R but you have to see the direction I5 direction and 12 ampere direction is just opposite with each other right so we can say that I5 would be equal to minus 12 if the direction is same then we'll consider it as a positive sign now next one is I4 I4 is moving from VB to 0 so we'll write down VB minus 0 divided by 10 so now we can solve two variable two variable are V and VB we'll have two equation after solving it in the calculator we'll get the value for V and VB and then further we can get the current right now the next topic is source transformation as you know that source transformation is conversion of current source to voltage source it's not necessary that whether they'll mention source transformation then only we need to use it we can use source transformation to simplify the circuit also okay like suppose if current source is connected in parallel with the resistance then also then only in that case we need to convert it into the voltage like this is the circuit simplified circuit if you want to convert this current source into the voltage source then you would be able to convert it how see like suppose this is 5 ampere 10 ohm 6 ohm and 100 volt now you can see that 100 volt is as it is we don't touch it now this current source would be converted into the voltage source the resistance which is parallel connected in parallel with the current source same resistance would be connected in parallel series with the voltage source right so 6 ohm will remain as it is resistance value is how much 10 ohm 10 ohm voltage is how much according to ohm's law v is equal to i multiplied by r i is how much 5 resistance is how much 10 so voltage would be equal to 50 okay this is 6 ohm and this is 100 so this is how we can use source transformation and further you can use we, we can do opposite also you can convert this current source into the voltage got it or voltage source into the current source like suppose if I want to convert this voltage source into the current source then in that case again the same condition would be val uh, valid that if the resistor is connected in series with the voltage source then only you will be able to convert it if resistance is connected in parallel with the voltage source then in that case you won't be able to convert it got it again 100 volt will remain as it is right and 10 ohm would be connected in parallel with the current source like this you can draw this current source here or here it's one and the same thing why because voltage across these two would be same right so resistance is again 10 ohm i is how much v by r voltage is 50 resistance is 10 so current would be 5 ampere we got the same thing understood next one is about the Thevenin theorem the most most important theorem why I said most important theorem reason is because if you know the Thevenin theorem you would be able to solve Norton theorem or you will be able to solve superposition theorem or you will be able to solve maximum power transfer theorem okay if you don't know about this theorem then you won't be able to solve another theorem okay now what is the first step of the Thevenin theorem remember Hmm? like suppose they ask you to calculate current in 10 ohm now tell me the step number one of Thevenin theorem remove 10 ohm means remove RL RL would be removed that would become an open circuit now the second step is now I am removing this RL shortest now we need to mark a and b and next second step is to calculate voltage which voltage heaven in voltage 
and thevenin voltage would be equal to VAB, right? Then how will we calculate VAB? Just imagine you are standing at A, you need to move towards B. You are moving from A to C, C to D, D to B. You can choose the longest path, but you will choose the shortest path that would be easy for you until and unless current source is mentioned in your path. Like you don't follow the path where current source is present. Remember I told you the current source is your enemy. So you won't go through that path where your current source is, where your enemy is present. Got it? So can I say VAC plus VCD plus VDB? VAC is how much? I got into Ohm's law. IAC into RAC. VCD is how much? ICD into RCD. VDB is how much? IDB into RDB. Every time you need to do this step. Got it? IAC is zero because as you can see that no current is flowing in this. Similarly, no current is flowing in this DB branch. So this is also zero. RCD is how much? 6 ohm. ICD is how much? That we can calculate it by using mesh analysis. Right? So every time, you, when, whenever you need to calculate VTH, you need to put A and B and you need to follow these steps. Whether it's a difficult question or an easy question. And for current, you can get the mesh analysis. So it's a simple mesh analysis minus 4i1 minus 6i1 plus 100 would be equal to 0 minus 10i1 is equal to minus 100. Then i1 would be equal to 10, right? It will become 60 volt. So our half part of Thevenin is completed. Now in the next step, what we need to do? In the next step, we need to calculate RTH. For RTH, we need to do voltage source must be short circuit. Current source must be open circuit. Now we have to redraw the diagram every time, right? So now just imagine we are standing at A position and we need to move towards B. 4 ohm, 6 ohm, 8 ohm, these are all are your friends. So whichever of your friend are in the same path, that means they are connected in series. And whichever of your friend are connected in different path, that means they are connected in parallel. And you will always start with your friend which is very far away from you. So tell me now, you will start with 8 ohm or 4 ohm? Who is far away? You are standing at A, 4 ohm. So 4 and 6, they are at the same path or at the different path? So that means they are connected in parallel, right? Plus combined it would be in series with 8 ohm. That would be your RTH, correct? Now last and final step of the Thevenin theorem. You calculated VTH, you calculated RTH, put together in series, then connect back RL in the same position where you have removed. So formula for the current. That would be VTH divided by RTH plus RL. This is current. Okay. Now the next Norton theorem. Norton is in your slavers. Okay, Norton is in Manipal. Next one is maximum power transfer theorem okay in this also you need to solve it through Thevenin only what is the formula for the maximum power that is V squared TH divided by 4 RL 99% they'll give you to calculate maximum power for that you need to calculate VTH and there is one condition of maximum power that if RL is equal to RTH then only in that case maximum power will transfer okay then only in that case maximum power will transfer got it so can we say that P max would be equal to V square TH divided by 4 RTH how will we calculate VTH by Thevenin theorem how will we calculate RTH by Thevenin theorem 
So ultimately to calculate maximum power transfer theorem you need to calculate Thevenin theorem only. But in this you don't need to calculate current. Only VTH and RTH. Got it? Now next theorem is superposition theorem. Right? In the superposition theorem what we need to do superposition theorem we have to keep one source or at a time and we have to kill other source right like suppose in the first step we need to keep first source and kill other sources killing other source means voltage source must be short circuit right and current source must be open circuit correct like suppose i am giving given numerical simple numerical they can modify this numerical by any form but the method and the concept is always same in this how much sources is present three source right so this question will be solved in three steps got it and suppose this ask you to calculate current in 6 ohm so if they have marked current direction that's well and good if they didn't mark we have to take it our own convenience so step number one keep first source kill other source kill other source means current source would be open circuit voltage source must be short circuit in the second step keep second source this one is the second source so other sources are removed voltage source must be short circuit now in the third step keep third source right so other steps would be removed again current source would be open circuit and we'll keep the third source understood now in this we'll mark i dash in the second step we'll mark i double dash and in the third step we'll mark i triple dash okay rest of the diagram is same as you can see now if you are comfortable in mesh analysis then use mesh analysis if you are comfortable in nodal analysis then use nodal analysis but i prefer student to use kcl or nodal analysis in superposition theorem reason reason being is like in this we need to calculate the current in branch but if we'll follow the mesh that will calculate the current in loop right so but as you can see that there is no node so we can't use nodal in this so it's a simple one mesh single mesh single variable single equation you will get the value of i dash in this we'll have one node va after solving you will get the value of i double dash again in this we can simply use a single mesh so last and final answer would be i would be equal to i dash plus i double dash plus i triple dash because we don't want i dash i double dash i double dash what they ask in the question current why i have added all the current reason is because current direction is same in each and every case like suppose if i mistakenly or by intentionally i have taken the opposite direction of i double dash then what do i need to do i would be equal to i dash minus i double dash plus i triple dash okay so whichever direction you have taken opposite that should be subtracted but avoid this kind of condition i'll generalist avoid this kind of condition it's preferable to take the same direction always got it now next is which theorem i think these three theorems are there in your syllabus now okay next formula is current division rule this is also the important formula current division rule is applicable only in the parallel circuits okay you can't apply current division rule in the series circuit because current is not divided in series circuit now like suppose this is the case in this i1 is flowing in this i2 is flowing and in this i is flowing total current so formula of i1 would be equal to total current total current is how much i multiplied by the 
opposite branch which one is the opposite branch opposite to the 6 that is 10 ohm right divided by sum of resistor which are connected in parallel that is 6 plus 10 similarly tell me the formula for i2 total current total current is i multiplied by the opposite branch opposite branch is 6 divided by sum of resistor which are connected in parallel okay similarly we'll have voltage division rule voltage division rule is applicable only in series circuit and it is used to calculate voltage okay like suppose we need to calculate voltage across 6 ohm so formula for that would be total voltage total voltage is how much 100 ohm 100 volt multiplied by in whichever branch we need to calculate voltage that resistance 6 ohm divided by sum of resistor which are connected in series that is 6 plus 4 so its answer would be like this similarly if we want to calculate the voltage across 4 ohm that would be 100 volt multiplied by 4 divided by addition of all the resistors got it now the next part is transient analysis right and in the transient analysis what we need to do um, step number one as i told you that draw two circuits one is t less than zero another one is t greater than zero right for t greater than zero calculate tau tau is equal to time constant if it's an rl circuit then tau value is l divided by r equivalent and if it's rc circuit then tau is equal to r equivalent multiplied by c right no now for t great less than zero we need to calculate current in case of rl circuit how will we calculate current il of zero minus would be equal to il of zero plus that would be equal to i naught and uh, how will we calculate it by making inductor as a short circuit right now if suppose there is a k short circuit replace inductor with a plane wire then across that only you will need to calculate current now if there is a rc circuit then in that case you need to calculate voltage voltage would be vc of 0 minus would be equal to vc of 0 plus would be equal to v not okay so uh, vc vc0 minus vc0 plus now in this case capacitor you will need to do as open circuit got it now the next most important thing thing how will you calculate il similar to the current like normal current and how will you calculate v naught similar to the vth jaise humne vth nikala hai na vth v a b in the thevenin similar method we need to use that okay now in the next step step number two we have to see that whether it's a charging condition or it's a discharging condition right hmm? okay i was saying i was saying capacitor would behave as a open circuit in case of rc and inductor will behave as a short circuit now in the next step we need to see whether it's a charging condition or discharging condition so how will you see whether it's charging if you are giving any supply then it would be a charging condition if no supply is there then it would be discharging condition supply means any kind of source so we'll have different equation for the charging and discharging for the charging it is v is equal to v naught 1 minus e raised power minus t by tau for the current i would be equal to i naught 1 minus e raised power minus t by tau for the discharging condition v is equal to v naught e raised power minus t by tau and i is equal to i naught raised power minus t by tau so in the previous steps as you can see we already calculated tau right we already calculated tau 
T is sometimes given in the question, sometimes not given. P naught and I naught, as I told you, this is I L of zero minus is I I naught, and V of zero minus is V naught. So all the values we have calculated, we can just substitute it, then we'll get the final answer.